So in this presentation, I'm going to teach you guys about how to tread water. I think it's very important for everyone to know how to tread water because it helps keep you safe in water without actually having the knowledge to know how to swim. So imagine you're wading in a lake with your family and friends and some child's toy starts floating away where it's too deep for them, but to you it only goes up to like your knees or your hips. So you take those couple steps out to reach the toy and then you're all of a sudden under the water. You didn't know that the water dropped off underneath you and you don't know how to swim. So you're trapped under the water. This actually happened to a woman that we teach some lessons to at my work. Every time she submerges under the water, she comes up crying and she, that noise just scares her so much. And treading water is a very easy, simple thing that does not require a lot of energy that can just get you up to the surface, keep you on the surface so you can call for help and that someone can come get to you. I think everyone should know how to tread water because it's a decent thing. Um, in a study done by American Red Cross, American Red Cross they discovered that 54% of Americans actually don't know how to swim in the U.S. I think that's a very big number, and that's kind of scary for all the people who go boating in the summer, or if they just take their kids to the pool, say their kid runs and jumps in the deep and they can't swim, can you jump in and save them? Probably not. Okay, okay. so definition of treading water is an aspect of swimming that involves a swimmer staying vertical in the water while keeping their head above the surface. So main key points of treading is that you are not, you know, trying to bend over, you're not going in a bunch of different positions as if you're swimming a stroke, you're just mostly staying vertical. And treading water makes it so you can stay on the surface, doesn't take a lot of movement, it's easy. Best things about treading water is it's easy once you get the hang of it, not hard to teach, and it uses a little amount of energy. Mostly anyone can do it, and you don't need to have knowledge of all the strokes to be able to tread water. So body position in the water. Most thing important is that your head, you're not ducking your head back. A lot of people who are trying to tread water or learn to float on their back, they try to duck their head back. This actually makes it so when you dip your head back, your head starts to go into the water and yes, your body will float up and you can float for a while, but not everyone has the body type to be able to float. Um, your to torso, main thing you need to know for treading is your vertical from your torso you want to stay in a straight line above your water, and your legs are 90 degrees as if you're sitting in an invisible chair. So when you're in the water, it's exactly like you're sitting. Um, just your knees bent because you're going to be doing things with your legs. Okay, so your upper body movement. The main thing you want to do with your arms is you want to make sure they're really wide because that wide movement is what's going to keep you up on the surface a lot of a bigot. A lot of children, when they panic air in water, they do an upward motion, that pushing down on the water will get them above the surface, but when they lift their arms back up to do the push-up again, it brings them under the water, so then they just get more panic. So that's why you want to go a side-to-side -side motion, because it will keep you on the surface the whole time, no bobbing motion in the water. So that's what skull is, it's that side-to-side -side wide motion. You want to have a cupped hand because you will get the most power and force generated through it. Because if you have an open hand, all the water slips through your fingers and you're not getting anywhere, and you're not propelling anything, so your cupped hand will get you the most. And just that figure eight motion just kind of explains the skull where you go side to side and do a figure eight. Next thing is your lower body, so your legs. You're still sitting in that chair with your legs that are bent. Your knees are where all your motion is going to be. Your thighs don't really do much of the work. And then all the power comes from your feet and your shins. Egg beater motion is the main thing they call for treading. Um, it's the motion where your legs go counterclockwise and clockwise in an inward motion, spinning at different times. It's kind of awkward to get it first because you're not used to doing this with your legs and it's an awkward motion, but once you get the hang of it, you can tread wilder without your arms because your legs are the most motion, so it's really easy to conserve energy. So I think treading water is a very important thing for everyone to learn. It doesn't require a lot of energy, you can stay on the surface easily. And if you fall in or get into a situation where you need to stay above the water, if you don't know how, it can keep you safe. So that's my presentation.